Hello and welcome to today's LOL Esports Roundup. We're going to cover the news of the last day in uh, the four major regions. If you missed my video earlier today and you're a minor region fan, I did my top 10 minor region power rankings based on the teams that I've played so far. So if you like, would like to watch that, that's there. Disclaimer before I start this, um, two disclaimers actually. First, Afro Moon retired yesterday, had a great career. Um, you know, uh, so, you know, it, it's one of those things age catches up with you he's the only player older than i am um double f might be older than i am um but afro was definitely older than i was um i am and he uh you know he had to call it quits but he's gonna be uh co uh what co-streaming or whatever and honestly um i love watching sneaky medios i don't I, I mean i don't know what i'm gonna do with live viewing myself this year um Right now, I'm going to live view tonight, but I don't know how far that's going to go um, long term. But um, Sneaky, Medios, I mean, all the people listed are great, but I, I prefer pro players, former pro players. And I'm, I'm wondering how good Afrim is going to do. So, uh, you know, it's going to be definitely something interesting. He seemed like a very charismatic player for a long time, you know. So, uh, you know, he had a great career um, and I hope that co-streaming fulfills his itch. And uh, yeah, so. Secondary disclaimer, um, I said yesterday, uh, the LCS roundups are the next day because they end so late. I can't do this video at 11 o'clock at night um, because the LCK happens literally at three in the morning. So what am I going to do the LCK recap like 20 hours after it's done? Like, no. Um, so I'm going to push the LCS roundup back to the next day. So that means tonight's LCS games, opening day games will be on tomorrow's roundup that will come out around this time tomorrow. So it'll be uh, like that. And then these games here will be on the next day after the LEC is done. So it'll be in the evening uh, on Saturday. So uh, the two series today, I went 2-0 in my predictions, Gen G and uh, Breon. Gen G, 1-1, one one, seventh in my power rankings. Fred at Breon. Damn it, I said Breon first and I made a note like, yes, you did it. And then I did it, Fred at Breon again. Breon, 2-0. Gen G win 2-0. On the uh, in the series pays 11 1 and 11 30 percent of damage earning my MVP peanut 10 2 and 11 in the jungle Morgan 4 9 and 1 27 percent of damage for Breon this series was extremely one-sided um, only two out of 64 minutes for, uh, Breon found themselves in a gold lead um, that is utter domination um, that, I mean, that is crazy, right? You think about it, I have 60 minutes, 65 minutes. Gen G were ahead for 63 of them. Um, or, or six, I may have said 64, 62, whatever. Um, you get my point. It was utter domination. Um, Peanut played a fabulous game one, honest to God. And, um, going into it, I mean, he was, he was MVP, but game two was a lot rougher for Jen on top lane. Um, Doran and Peanut attempted two ganks or two dives on the Morgan that he actually was able to evade on the NAR. And I thought Morgan played next, a very, very good series, given that he was camped. He was dove in the end in that game, I think, four times. Um, and the struggles kind of soured me on Peanut a little bit for, for the series. Not to say he won 10, 2, and 11. Like, he, he did fabulous. But he had that, uh, you know, 10 to 15 minutes of, you know, struggles out of 65. Um, and uh, Pays, I thought, in game one did his job. And then in game two was very impactful. There was a moment, actually, where the game was... A little bit closer, and uh, he had a triple kill in an instance where where Bro might have won a team fight, and uh, Pays came through on a bit in a big way on Varus. I thought also speaking of Peanut, I thought Umpty um, really matched him in game two, utilizing the Maokai alt very well around um, the Drake pit, being able to secure three Drakes that he probably otherwise wouldn't have without the Maokai, um, which is why I really really like Maokai as a pick. I think that it's exceptional. The the Objective control is out of this world. Gank potential, dive potential with that alt is crazy. Um, obviously, don't pick it with Silas up unless you plan on red side Maokai Silas, um, because that is that is not a that is not a good idea. Um, because Maokai, I think without the alt is is okay, but I'd rather have a Sejuani at that point. Just from my own perspective, I'm no super analyst or anything. I just I, the way it looks and in, in the objective control. I think objective control is like the most important part of the game outside of just the first 10 minutes. Um, but 
that is uh, a thing. Um, and outside of that, I mean, Karras and Chovy. Chovy did his job. He played Corky game two. And I, I, I said yesterday in the Discord when Bro was winning, and, and I'm like, if Bro end up keep win, if Bro keeps winning these 40 minute games, Corky's gonna come back because it's a uh, scaling pick, and Bro scales, and if it can, they can prove that scaling is winning, then the LCK will never not give up an opportunity to go like Azir, Corky, Victor, mid. And uh, Chovy picked it. It didn't look that good, really, honestly. Uh, Karis really shoved him in for quite a while um, in game two. Uh, came out fine, obviously. They won and won with relative ease. Um, but there was, you know, issues with the Corky, so maybe it's it's dead, thank God. Uh, T1 and the Kwangdong Freaks. T1 first in my power rankings, 2-0. Freaks 0-2. Um, Faker ends up being MVP in a 2-0 win. Zeus, 6-5-5, five, and 28% five, of damage in top lane as um, the top lane kind of ended up on a serious island in this one. Faker, 3-1-10. and 10. Bulldog, 3-5-3, three, 33% and 3, of damage for the freak. So, um, this, so, I thought Jen and Bro was domination. 2 out of 64, 65 minutes. T1 led every minute of this series. Um all of them and uh they were up i'm not kidding six seven k gold at like 50 i mean 15 minutes might be actually honestly i'm like trying to just remember it it was so one-sided game one i just i couldn't believe it and honestly i thought the freaks had a better draft i really did they they had lucian nami they had um sejuani or or my okay i forget which but they were in a good spot i was like wow you know the freaks have a good draft here t1 i mean they gave the caitlin and guma made them pay with the caitlin don't get me wrong is caitlin ash bot lane um out of t1 um and t1 just ran them right over i mean and faker ends up being mvp because he picked set in game one we haven't seen set mid i think they said they put up a graphic set mid hadn't been picked in over a year and a half in the lck um and and in the early game, the first seven minutes, they dove bot side four man twice. And um, Faker went to bot lane and there was no hesitation. Like you watch, set never stops. Like Faker never stops coming and he dives. Like there's no like, oh, let's sit in the bush for a second and, and wait for it. No, he just went in both times with ease, executed perfectly those two dives. And that just set the tone for the whole series. Like they actually got to a point where somebody said in the discord and I didn't see it. I saw it after, so if, if it's true, like, Young Jay might have been a little emotional after the first game. If that's honestly the case, like, they, like, that just shows how dominant T1 was in game one that that happened. Like, it was destruction. Uh, Zeus in top lane, dominating Dudu. Like, Dudu was not, an, a, 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 he wasn't relevant in this series. He really wasn't. I think he might have even had solo kill in Zeus, but it didn't matter. Like, it was so one-sided. Um... And Bulldog actually in game one had more damage than anybody. Once again, Bulldog ends up being like, and I mean not anybody, just not anybody on his team, like everybody in the game. Like Bulldog has done the like very well in the first three series so far of his career at, at 17 years old. And the Freaks may go 0-18 this year. Like they are not good. But Bulldog... If he can get through this mentally, which is going to be a hurdle, as we just said with Young Jay in this whole situation, if he can get through this, I mean, it's going to be a big deal. Somebody mentioned Teddy in the in the in the YouTube chat when I was live viewing, and it makes a lot of sense, right? We saw Chetty, uh, Teddy with uh, Jin Air really struggle, but Teddy was good. I think it's a similar situation with Bulldog, but even younger, and hopefully he can get through it. Um, and then in game two, T1 picked um, Varus Caitlin Bot. And it got really trolly in that game. Like, it was like, wow, this is, this seems like a scrim. This seems like a joke to T1. And it really felt like it. And they were ahead by, like, 4K gold for so long. Just, like, and they were screwing around. Like, um, the kill score ends up being really close. Like, 14 to 10. But it was not close the entire game. It wasn't as big of a blowout as game one because they were screwing around more. But what a, like, what a 2-0 by T1. Like, between these two, literally, the losers only, only had two minutes led out of, like, I don't know, 115, like absolutely one-sided. Um, bro are not at that level, and KDF are in the dumpster. Just one second. Now for the sneak peek for tomorrow. Um, LCK, Nongshim, and DRX. DRX 24th in my power rankings, both 0-2. Sorry. 
Um, last series, uh, Nongchim lost to D plus 2-0. And um, my nose is itching. Um, Gen G beat DRX 2-0. Week 8, day 3 of summer, DRX would win 2-1. Only one player from the starting five on each side remains from those rosters, and it is Barrel. He went, and this is a very Barrel score, 1 kill, 15 deaths in 3 games, and 33 assists, and 1. That is very Barrel-like. DNDN and Rascals, a matchup I'm highlighting. Discord, 5 out of 6 voters agree. Um... DNDN and, and, and Rascal. Um, Rascal needs to get DRX on the right track. I think he is the, he's the guy that's going to have to do it. Um, DRX look awful. Croco and Fate are on Struggle Street. Duck Dom and Barrel are not getting... I mean, there, there's no cohesion in bot lane. Um, Nongshim, I mean, I think Fiesta had some good moments against D+. He had a couple solo kills. One on Deft, one on Showmaker. Second one, I think he did. Um, so we'll see what happens with that. KT and HLE. KT 6th, HLE 15th in my power rankings, both 1 and 2. Um, KT coming off of a loss a couple days uh, yesterday against Sandbox 2-1. HLE coming off of a loss to Sandbox 2-1 last week. Um, these teams have a lot of similarities, and uh, it's, it's something. So week 6, day 2, KT would win 2-0 in summer. Only two players hold over from those rosters, both on KT. Aiming 11, 2, and 7 was the you know better kill score, uh, better KDA from uh, that series. And the other player was Cuz. And that leads me to the Cuz versus Clid um, matchup. So, um, Clid has been awful. He's been awful. Oh, sorry. KT's 1 and 2, HLE 1 and 1. Um, Clid has been awful. And uh, we knew that. After the second series, a lot of people know that. A lot of people are mentioning it. And, and there are some rumors that maybe during scrims are fine, but they can't translate scrims to this. And, and communication and all sorts of stuff is, is kind of off. And that is a possibility with good with, with teams of five players that haven't played together. Well, four players that haven't played together. Kingan and Zeka have played together. Um, KT, you have a bunch of new parts. Aiming has not played with Lahens. He's got to get along with... He's got to figure out Lahens. BDD has to figure out Cuz. Like, Cuz has to hit smites. Speaking of Cuz, Cuz missed four smites in a row yesterday. I don't think I've ever seen a player lose four smite fights in a row on objectives. I really don't think so. Like, he... And it was, like, more like steals. It wasn't, like, 50-50s. It was, like... I don't know. I, I, I mean, it really wasn't 50-50s. And Cuz kept losing. And um, I think he got in his head. And I joked... Um, I was like, you know, maybe, because I think BDD had Karma mid in that game. I said, I bet they wish they had unsealed Spellbook. And just told BD, one of them just was like, or BDD himself, he's been around the block, just started just carrying Smite. And saying, because we're done with you smiting, I'm going to do it. And then it's funny that the next game, um, game three, they picked TF mid with unsealed Spellbook. And it was like, oh, well, they might, um, or no, that was game two. Game one was where he, where he uh, missed four Smites. And I was like, maybe they're... They, they obviously want a second smite in case Cuz misses one. And they're like, you know what, Cuz, we're done with this. And I think Lahens alted on Lux and um, stole a Drake. Like, literally, like, they were like, we can't trust Cuz to do this. Um, five out of seven voters agree. Um, both these teams so far disappointments. But that's how super teams can be. We think last year, Vitality, TL, BLG, LNG. Right? Nongshim to some people. All disappointments massive disappointments right um and who knows that could happen again that could be happening again with with these two teams super teams don't always work and that's the thing with jdg everybody wants to be hyped up on jdg they're third in my power rankings as well but they've only played one series and super teams more often than not don't do great and immediately don't do great. So it's um it's definitely something. Um, LCS preview for tomorrow. CLG and EG, the last time they played was week five, day one of summer. EG would win. Eight out of ten of those players are in the game tomorrow. Inspired led the way, 609 on a poppy, I think. Contracts, 2-2-1. Uh, matchup I like was Luger Poom versus FBI and Vulcan. I think Luger and Poom is like a gatekeepy um, bot lane, like it's middle tier, um, but they they are very 
they're good at some matchups to the point where you've got to, you know, play your game. And FBI and Vulcan are still going to be getting together. This is their, going to be their second game together. And, um, excuse me, it's, it's going to be a test. Because Luger Poom have been together a long time, right? We think of, what who is it? Uh, Apollo Hakuo, I think. Apollo Hakuo? Was that who it was? Like, those two are, like, inseparable or something. And, um, you know, they just kind of went with the flow. That might be the Luger Poom of the past right um discord four out of nine want inspired versus contract i think that's because they really want to see i say it now that i think the discord just likes really lopsided matchups um gg and c9 c9 21st in the power rankings week five day two c9 would win six out of those 10 players are um holdovers berserker went three two and nine in the win sticks a six four and oh on a twitch so the bot lane matchup is a matchup i am highlighting Originally, it was Gory and Diplex, and the Discord also agreed, but Gory is not playing this week due to visa issues. Young is playing, and um, I think Diplex is going to have an easy you know, second game of his rookie split in the LCS in that case. No offense to Young, but um, statistically, if I recall correctly, Young was not going to be a threat to Gory. Um, um, but... As it relates to this, uh, the bot lane, like Stixe obviously did fine last time, right? So Stixe and Ole had done well then. Stixe and Huhi, I think that they, you know, Huhi's not worse than Ole, all that. I mean, it's kind of like a wash. Um, so uh, we'll see what happens with that one. The Discord, nobody voted for that. So uh, they like Licorice versus Fudge as the second option. TSM and TL. TL 14th in the power rankings. Week 6, day 1, TL would win. Uh, four out of ten people, um, four out of ten, four out of ten players from that series are in the games tomorrow. Core JJ one oh nine, Chime one one two. Um, the matchup I want to watch is Maple and Harry. Um, I want to see how Harry does. I really do. I want to keep watching. I, I, I mean, I've mentioned him before, but I think Vic, Vicla and Harry is. I mean, not Vicla and Harry. Um, Maple and Harry, like Maple is the carry for TSM. He's going to have to get it done. Um, and Harry's a rookie and there might be surprises thrown his way that he's not ready for. Um, unfortunately I didn't write down the discord results on that one. So, uh, we're going to have to just skip that. 100 thieves and, uh, immortals week six, day two, 100 thieves would win three out of 10 players, uh, started in that series, starting in tomorrow's, uh, closer. Went 1-1-4 in the win. Can be 3-1-2, so a very close matchup. Um, myself and the Discord agree that the bot lane matchup is the one to watch. I think it's because it's double lift versus tactical. And then also Buzio versus Fleshy. Two rookies in the LCS, right? Fleshy, obviously a T TCL player, but this is his first chance in a major region. And um, this will be his second game. And, you know, after C9's game today, this should be a little easier for 100 Thieves. No offense to Immortals, but... Um, I think I've made my um, opinion clear on where I think Immortals are going to end up in spring. Um, FlyQuest and Dignitas will end the uh, week in the LCS. Week 5, Day 2 of Summer, FlyQuest would win. Um, however, only 1 out of the 10 starters from that game are in the series, the game tomorrow. And uh, it's a dig player. It's Spawn 0-2-0. All 5 FlyQuest players have been swapped out. And then there's Spawn, and the other 4 players hit, uh, are all gone. So... Only one out of ten players hold over. Um, Spica and Santorin is the matchup I want to watch. Very closely matched junglers. Spica, Santorin, Closer, Blabber, I think are all very close. I think Inspired and Pioshik are on another, another level. Um, so, with that in mind, I think that the junglers are going to be pretty evenly matched. And honestly, like, when you think of it... Um, from this the the discord likes the bot lane matchup the most um you take it and you say to yourself okay we have prince winsome against uh spawn and ignar i'm like prince is the best one out of there and is ignar better than winsome mm, mm. Uh, at this point in ignar's heyday yes he's better than winsome but is, is he better than winsome right now mm, i don't know um but um as far as like um the rest of the, the map goes, I mean, the Rift, I mean, Arma could maybe match Impact for sure. Um, I know some people don't think Arma's good because they seem in the LEC, but I, like I said yesterday, I think it's going to be average, um, which is fine. Um, 
it's fine. And Santorin and Jensen are older players, and they're going to be against, you know, Spica and, and, and Vikla. And I think that's going to be where this game is won, is in um, jungle mid. I think, like, bot lane, you know, you, you should be banning, like, Azari and, and stuff like that against Prince. Take Prince out of the game and uh, leave it up to, you know, mid. I think that's kind of the strat with that one. So that's it for the roundup. Uh, thank you for watching. If you liked the video, like it. Subscribe to the channel for daily League of Legends content. Follow me on Twitter. Join the Discord. Become a YouTube member. And thank you for watching.